Hi, this is Mike with Indigo Music. Today I'm going to show you how to set up touch keys with Ableton Live and your virtual instruments to control uh, different parameters. And uh, the first thing you'll want to do is open the controller editor for the native instruments um, in iControl and uh, load in the template that is um, the touch keys advanced template. And you'll see that um, there's two templates inside of this. And one is the full and the split. And basically I've created a template that allows a full range of the right hand, kind of an area for key switches. And um, then some default controllers from CC1, which is Modwell, and up to uh, After Touch, which I've placed on knob eight, mostly for a visual reference so that you can see when you're pressing down when after touch is being engaged. And you can also use these knobs as um, threshold ranges. But I'll get into that later. Um, and the next page is really what I want to focus on, which is touch keys. And all it is is a CC118 down to 111. It's the highest range that touch keys can use um, for sending out continuous control messages. But in Ableton Live, Whenever you go to MIDI map a controller to a software parameter, it wants to see a physical controller. And by assigning these to knobs, you can assign any of these controllers, which also correlate to touch keys controllers to any software parameter. And so the next thing you'll notice is I kept CC64, which is sustain and expression, mod well and pitch bend is the same, so that you would have some generic MIDI messages um, that would be in use uh, for loading any patches that might utilize these typical controllers. Um, but the next step you'll want to do is open up touch keys software and load up the the advanced template, the touch keys template. Make sure that your keyboard input is complete control and uh, you may need to set these zones to different ports when you first load it up. You'll notice that I have five zones loaded. That doesn't really mean that I'm going to use five ranges on the keyboard. I've actually done this in such a way so that you can combine any of these zones for different ways in your DAW without having to load another touch keys template. So you can have up to eight and um, you'll see why this is useful in a moment. Um, but you'll see that the first zone zero is C4 to B6, which is basically, you know, the middle C and up. And it's in monophonic mode, and it's sending out channel one. But its virtual port is zero. And um, every other zone, it, it will be a different virtual port, and you can have different mappings per zone. Um, you'll notice that zone one has a range of C2 to B3 which is the lower register of the keyboard. And what this does is allows you to have separate control on the touch keys with your right hand versus your left hand. And these added zones are basically similar to these, but um, this would give you a high extended range. In case you wanted to transpose octave up, you, would, you could utilize this port. Um, and if you wanted to transpose down, you could use this port. Um, one thing to keep in mind is the lowest octave setting when you transpose down and up has to match whatever zone that you're transposing down to or your mappings will be off. But um, I also left in a couple ranges here that were just generic and uh, bypass. So there's a, a full range on zone four, which is still monophonic. And by combining these different zones in your DAW, it just gives you um, a whole lot of you know, options without having to load a bunch of different templates. And uh, it may not work for everything, but I think it works for most things. So after you've got that loaded, I would uh, open up your Ableton Live. In the basic template, there's one track. And I've inserted a virtual instrument rack with the sample audios flute, which utilizes the SWAM engine. It's a physical modeling new technique that they developed. They just make amazing sounding instruments. And uh, when you open up the SWAM engine, 
Um, first thing it's going to want is an expression control. That could be a breath controller or anything of that nature. I'm using a foot controller to do this. And what we're going to do is assign different parameters inside of the SWAM engine to um, existing controllers plus touch keys controllers. And we're going to use them in, in tandem with each other. And uh, the whole idea being that you want to be able to um, manipulate the sound in such a way that you don't have to think about it. And it's more of a natural technique of playing. Some of the first things that I did here was under options and MIDI mapping, you can assign your continuous controllers to any kind of mapping that you would want. So what I'm going to do on expression is leave that to CC11. And on the vibrato depth, I want to leave that to aftertouch so that when I press down on a key, it initializes the vibrato. That has nothing to do with touch keys. It's just your normal aftertouch controller. Um, so right now, we have two controllers active. We have expression with the foot controller, and we have enabling vibrato by pressing down on aftertouch. The next one we might want to control is the vibrato rate which I've assigned to CC118. And if you look at the uh, touch keys control, under 118, I have a parameter of contact area. Contact area is different from after touch. It's not just pressing down. It's how much meat of the finger is in contact with the key. So you get no vibrato at all until you press down the after touch. But now you can control by continuously pressing down, then move your finger back and forth. You can get more continuous control or more vibrato depth. Um, you can control the vibrato in many different ways, but that gives you one way to control the vibrato. But getting back to the SWAM engine, um, now we have three continuous controllers. So one of the other things that you might want to control on a flute might be the growl. So I've assigned CC117, which in um, touch keys, 117 is assigned to the Y position controller. So whenever I move up, you can hear it introduce the harmonic. So, you know, these little things and variations is what is kind of what fools the ear in thinking something is real and it gets, just gives more expression. And then we have a technique called flutter tongue, and we've assigned that to CC115. And in touch keys, 115 is sending out the message of a controller two-finger mean. So touch keys is a multi-touch device, so it can recognize up to three fingers of touch. So we have our typical scenario of control with one finger, but as soon as you use two fingers, you can turn on another controller. And on the Y axis, you can hear how it increases the depth of the flutter amount. Um, now you'll notice there's, that there's two finger mean and two finger distance. And I've assigned that to a different controller as well, 114. And when we go back to the SWAM engine, we've assigned 114 to the fall down, which is basically a key switch that triggers a um, sample of a flute falling down. And, uh, but we want to control this in real time during a performance. So um, the difference between the two finger mean, which is just basically two fingers close together, moving up and down on the Y axis, Two finger distance would be two fingers down, but as soon as you re re reach a threshold of distance between the fingers, it now, it now moves to controller 114. That gives you a lot more control on the surface of the keyboard without having to use more hands. That's just one hand of control and, and of course your foot using the expression, um, but you know, you don't have to do that either. So um, that gives you a lot more control over the sound and frees up your hands. So you can, of course, use that hand to play faster, 
because you have two hands on the board, 10 fingers faster, you know? Or it frees up your left hand to use the mod wheel and the pitch bend. And of course you can assign that to anything else that you would like. So um, if you wanted to, you could assign controller number one is the mod wheel. Now you could use that for the overblown technique. So we'll go to overblow and set that to CC1. And now whenever you play, and move the mod wheel, you will hear the overblow technique come in. Of course, the expression has to be high enough before you hear it, even if the mod wheel is up, because that models what a real flute would do. You have to blow hard in the velocity to get that note. So now you have vibrato that can be controlled on the X axis. You have growl with one finger that can be introduced for harmonic on the y-axis. You have aftertouch that creates vibrato. Then you can control that vibrato by more meat of the finger. And then you also have multi-finger gestures, which is two fingers, initializes the flutter tongue. And on the y-axis, the higher you go, the deeper the modulation. You also have two fingers that separate. And that will trigger the fall off. And so the last thing would be, you know, you don't have pitch bend because we are using the, the Y axis to control harmonic. So you still have your pitch bend wheel free to do any pitches. So the idea behind this is control that makes sense in real time performance. So to me, pressing in to get fine vibrato on aftertouch is a very natural way to do it. And to get a little bit of wider expression of a vibrato, use the x-axis. And to go in between, you can use surface area. So that's a lot of con fine control over the vibrato, and I like that sort of expression. And of course you can trigger um, harmonics flutter tongue and fall off as well as overblown techniques with the mod wheel but you also have pitch control with your pitch bend so that's one way to lay out a monophonic instrument in Ableton Live in touch keys another way to do this would be to go back to touch keys and you can turn on pitch bend which is set to whatever range you want. Right now I have it set to five semitones. And, but by default, pitch bend is, is the Y axis. You'd have to bypass the control mapping to not interfere with the pitch bend. You could have them working in conjunction, but that would mean every time you pitch bend a note up, it will also add in the harmonic. So now when you play, it will pitch bend and pitch down. So it's whatever you want to do, whatever you want to use it for, whatever, whatever feels best to you. And that gives you two different options of how to control a monophonic sound. Thanks for watching.